Well, NATO is moving forward with its nuclear exercises, flying around 60 aircraft, including B-52 bombers over Belgium, the North Sea, and Britain. At the same time, Russian military forces are going through large-scale drills of their own. Retired Lieutenant General Richard Newton, former vice chief of the Air Force, joins us live. Uh, General Newton, why is Russia using these kamikaze drones so much more often at this point? Well, as Evan reported, these uh, kamikaze drones, or they're, they're actually made in Iran, uh, are used to terrorize this, the, the, the civilians, the citizens of Kyiv and other parts of Ukraine. It's a terror weapon, and they're they're effective in doing just that. They're not necessarily in terms of going after significant military targets and so forth. But note that the attack first kicked off this morning at seven o'clock in the morning, Ukraine time, which is right at the height of their rush hour and, and people are starting to go for work and kids are starting to go to school and so forth. So Putin is really on the ropes here, I believe, and therefore he's lashing and use any type of capabilities he has. Uh, and if it also means again, terrorizing civilians, he'll do that. Well, you know, you mentioned the fact that Iran is selling these drones and other weapons. We know that the U.S. is planning further sanctions. But is there any way to stop this at this point? One way to stop it, and it's very difficult, if you think of a large uh, global supply chain or certainly regional supply chain, try to intercept these weapons where they get in the hands of the Russians. But that's very difficult. And the Russian already has a stockpile or inventory of the drones. And so it, it's a weapon and again in terms of of rising and assaulting the populace and so forth but the particular utility uh it, it was also reported that they're going after especially energy infrastructure because the workers come up and they're going to try to displace the ukrainian citizens from the ability to eat their homes and so forth and it's a, a terror weapon that's being used against the civilian populace so let's let's Keep focusing on Iran here. You know, the EU is trying to walk this delicate line of condemning Iran for helping Russia, also trying to negotiate this nuclear deal. We can't forget about that. How are they keeping these two issues separate? Well, I don't think they're keeping them separate. If you recall last week when we talked about the, the G7, you had the NATO defense uh, ministers meet in uh, in Europe and so forth, and you've got the upcoming G20 coming up in, in November. This will be a hot topic for uh, what we saw with declarations by the EU and so forth and the NATO ministers, you're going to see that being propelled forward in ongoing uh, major discussions as well as uh, communicate between certainly U.S., NATO and our allies to go toe to toe, not only against Russia, but those who want to help Russia, China, North Korea, Iran. And so this is going to displace whatever plans anybody ever had any, in terms of a, an Iran nuclear deal, which I frankly, wasn't necessarily for. That could be for another conversation another day. But the uh, aspects of that nuclear deal that we saw back in 2015-16 under the Obama administration, that to me is just about taken off the board because of uh, Iran is supporting Putin, supporting uh, Russia against this largest invasion uh, ever, you know, since World War II and so forth. So I think that's going to be definitely off the table for a long time. All right. General, as always, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.